They say fundamentals are crucial in anything, and that includes JavaScript. We've been working through Eloquent JavaScript, a book that's meant to teach people from the basics all the way on up in JavaScript. And I've been doing it in a live stream on like Mondays and Fridays when I can. We ran across higher order functions and I thought it might be a good time to take a break and actually practice this. So I'm gonna ask you to follow along with me. You can grab all the code in the description to get started. And we're gonna write our own higher order functions, including one that includes a closure as well. So hopefully you're ready to test your JavaScript knowledge. You ready? Let's go. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. I should mention here that I'm not trying to make these the most performant things ever. We're just going to do things like maps, filters, finds, reduces, and one example with a closure so that way you can interact with higher order functions and kind of think through them as they're written. Now, higher order function is anything that takes a function as an argument or one that returns a function to you. So these allow you to do more advanced things and that's what we're going to do first. Okay, so everything is based off this peeps array. Here you'll notice we've got some different things, like some of them don't have ages or they have different favorite numbers, that kind of stuff. What we want to do, first of all, is write our own filter method. Now, again, I'm not going to make these like the most comprehensive ever. The idea is not to duplicate the filter method, but just to write something that would filter something out on most normal conditions. So for instance, we could say like, I don't know, give me everybody with an age. So let's do this live together. I'm going to come down here. We'll say function my filter. We're gonna take in a few things. We'll take in an array, and then we'll take in a filter function, right? So filter function, we can name this whatever we want, but this is what makes it a higher order function because we're taking in a function as uh, an argument. All right, so we need, first of all, to have some kind of internal state. So let's say let my array or new array, how about that array like this, we're gonna initialize it just as an empty array, and then we'll loop over each item in our array, and let's use like a for of loop for that. So we'll say const uh, item of array. For each of these items, I simply want to filter if they meet my condition. So let's do a little if statement. We'll say if filter fn, if the item matches that, if it passes the filter test, then I want to push it to the new array. So we could say new array uh, like this dot push, and we're going to push in the item. Now in the end, we actually need to return something from this function, otherwise it's just going to always return undefined. So down below here, we need to return uh, the new array. So once it's done doing all that looping, it should return to us an array of only things that match whatever this filter is that we've passed it. And this is what filter does behind the scenes. Now, there are a couple other things it can take as well, like an array and, and other items, but right now I'm going to leave all that alone and just kind of stay focused on the most basic. So we'll say const, let's just say like uh, with ages maybe, and we're going to take in anybody with an age. Yeah, I think that should work. Okay, so uh, we're going to take the my filter method, or it's a function, it's not a method, so we have to call it like this, and pass in the array. Uh, this would be peeps, I think is what we called it. And then we have to pass in some kind of function that will then filter the array. So we're gonna take each person, we'll just call them p. We'll say p.age, if they exist, then you should give me back just those, uh, and let's see if it works. So let's see if I say node index.js, there we go, that should just be those with ages, I think so. So just the middle one is excluded. Okay, so that's all we're doing is kind of re-implementing these ourselves, um, but hopefully that makes sense, kind of how we got there, what we were doing. And there are probably more performant ways to do this. There's more ways that cover everything within uh, like a, a normal filter method, like an index and an, an array that you actually get back as well. So all that would be here as well, but for now, let's just keep going, okay? <laughs> so write our own custom map method. So here, this is like a little factory that does something to every single item in the array. So we're going to loop over stuff, but we just want to simply return um, like a finalized array with every item having pro been processed by our function that we passed in. So I'll say function on my map, and this will be similar. We're going to take it in an array and like a mapper function. And then we're just going to loop directly here. Actually, no, we need an array first. So we say let a uh, new array. And again, we'll just initialize this to nothing and take four const item of array. And here what we want to do is uh, every single one passes through the mapper function. So we should say mapper fn item like this. So each item will be pushed in. So that means we need to take our new array dot push like this. I think that works. And then we're simply going to return the new array. All right, I think I did that correctly. Uh, we take an array, mapper function, we initialize, then we loop over and just push every item in. Okay, that should work. Let's come down here and let's like, uh, let's capitalize the names maybe. Uh, so we'll say const with cap names and we'll say equals my map. 
we're going to pass in the peeps, and then we need our, our function we pass in. So this is for each peep. We just simply want to take in the p.name. We're going to do upper upper case like that. I think that should work. All right. Now it's the test. Let's try it. Yep. Okay. So we get them all back. Cool. So we're just passing in again this higher this function that our custom higher order function will loop over each item and do something to each of those items in the array. That's what a map does. Okay, so this one gets a little bit more complex. We've got a reduce method, uh, which is kind of hairy. And you can see that we can uh, have a higher order function that returns a single value from a peeps array. So we can't use the reduce method, but that's kind of basically what we're doing. So let's call this my reduce uh, function. I will go my reduce like this. Now this one is going to have a few things. It'll have the array. It'll also have the reduce uh, function, like reducer, I guess we'll, we'll call it. Have it like that. So we keep it consistent. And then we have an initial starting point. So initial uh, value. And what we want to do is set like an internal variable in here. So we'll call it start, I guess. It could be an array, could be an object, could be a number. So we need to, to use a let here in this case. We didn't have to up above. Uh, Cons would have worked here as well, but that's what we did. All right, so over here, we want to set this to the initial value. Um, probably if we're going to do a legitimate one here, we'd need to like check that it exists and return an error if it doesn't. But again, we're trying to keep this real simple. All right, uh, now what we want is to take our reducer function and we want to loop over each item in the array. So let's do another for of loop. So we'll say const um, item of array. For each of these items, we want to pass it to this reducer function and update the start variable with whatever we get back. So a start here will simply be the reducer function and we're just going to pass in the item. So this reducer function itself should handle whether or not we get back the initial value, like let's say we skip that item, or whether we like process some value. So all this will be done inside the reducer function that we pass in. And then we need to return start. I think that's right. All right, let's 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 test it out <laughs> and then we can fix it if it doesn't. So we'll say something like, uh, let's just maybe add up the ages. So just if they have an age, so that will allow us to kind of see that we're filtering and adding and stuff like that. So we're going to say like only or total ages. How about that? And we're going to take my reduce like that. We're going to pass in an array, which is peeps, not the parameter name, the function, which we'll get to in a second, and an initial starting point, uh, which will be zero uh, because we're wanting to add to that. Here, what we want to do is take the previous value. So we'll call it uh, accumulated or something like that. Usually I just call this ACC actually. So ACC and then the person itself. Now, what we're wanting to do is say if the p.age exists, then add it. So we could do this a couple different ways. Let's just return the initial value. Um, and then we want to add to it the p.age if it exists. If it doesn't, then we want to pass zero or I guess like miss it all together, but I think this should work. So we could say if this doesn't exist, then we just pass in zero. I think that should work. <laughs> all right, so let's try. So total ages, uh, let's run it. Object, object. Okay, so I clearly messed something up. Um, we want ACC plus item, reducer function. Oh, you know what? I think I only passed in the item. I have to actually pass in the start each time, right? So I'll get the initial starting value. That's this right here. I've called it ACC in this case. I'm down here, but this is the, the the argument here. The start and the item are what I'm getting each time. So now that should work. Let's try it again. Yeah, there we go. 38, is that the same rate? 23, 15, yeah. Okay, cool. So there is a bonus. Number all the favorites. So we, here we basically would have to like double up these. So let's get rid of this. We'll say const like total faves equals my reduce. We have to do an inner loop inside of here. Uh, inner reduce as well. We're going to take in the peeps. We'll have this array. We'll start at zero. I guess we're doing numbers on this, in this case. Um, and here what we want, let's see, we're going to get the initial value. Again, let's call this ACC. We'll take the person and let's do another error function where we say um, we're going to add up the P dot favorite numbers. Okay, so here, all right, we need to do this internal um, loop as well. So I'm going to just simply return the ACC plus whatever is the my reduce. So we've got another reduce inside of here where we pass it the p dot favorite numbers. Uh, we have its own little function, which we'll add in a second. And it also is initialized at zero. This is kind of confusing how compressed I've made this. <laughs> but hopefully that makes sense. Uh, we could call this ACC again because it's an inner scope. But just to make it clear, we'll call it like inner ACC and then the actual number. So we might as well call it number. 
And then all we want to do is return the inner ACC plus the number. Okay, I think I did that correctly. Let's see. So we've got total faves. Let's console log this down below. Um, where we pass in this my reduce, or this my reduce re receives our array, our initial array. We loop over each item. We're going to get back the the starting point inside of here. So we're going to take that starting point and add to it here this internal reduce that does the same thing. It gets an array of numbers, and we start with whatever we started with. In this case, it would start with zero. And then we take the number and we add it to that. And yeah, I think that should work. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Let's see if it works. 54. I don't know if that's right or not. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. 0, 4, 10, uh, 13. Yeah, that looks right. 54. We're going to say that that's correct. If it's not, let me know. <laughs> um, okay, cool. So we've got that last one. We've got uh, find method. Uh, so same kind of thing. We just want to return the first item that matches some kind of um, condition. So we'll say function uh, my find. We take in an array and like a find function. And here we want to simply loop over each item in the array. So we'll say for const item of array. If we find it, we want to return. Now when you return out of a four, it just immediately returns. So this is what we'll get back from this my find function. So we'd say find, actually no, we do need to do an if check. So if find a function, if the item matches that, then we can return the item. I think that's correct. Now, if nothing finds it, it should return undefined, but we might as well, I guess, we could also return undefined here. Undefined like that. Okay, so I think that should work. Let's find something. I don't know who's, uh, is blonde false? Mm, let's do age 23. Okay, so if the age equals 23. Um, so down here, we'll say const is 23, or first 23, technically first 23, the first person who's 23. We're going to take my find, pass in the peeps, then we have, uh, what do we have? Uh, a function where we take in a peep, a person, and we say p.age equals 23. All right, so we should either get undefined or the first person who's 23. If we don't have somebody who's 23, we should get undefined. Okay, cool. So we did get back Chris. If I change this to like, I don't know, 13 or something, I should not get anything. I should just get undefined, right? Because nobody's 13. So let's try that like that, undefined, okay, cool. And again, we explicitly called that out uh, right here. We re explicitly return undefined, but you could also just leave it alone and the same thing would happen. Um, so let's change this back to 23 and get rid of this. Okay, last one, write your own custom uh, score tracker that returns a function to track a game's sc score, create a few games and then track their scores. So we could say, actually let's stay with the function um, um, declaration here. We'll say like create scored game, I guess. <laughs> Here, we need to track some kind of internal state. And the first time we create this, we want to be able to, I guess we don't really need to pass in anything. I was going to say we want to pass in like an initial value, but I don't think we need to. Here, we're going to say, uh, let's score equal zero. Is that what we want? Yeah. So it's going to start with zero. Now what we want is to write a function, and this is what we're going to return. So this is a, another idea, like another type of higher order function. I don't know if that's how you'd say it. Higher order functions can receive other functions or return other functions. So in this case, we're returning another function. Here, we don't have to name this anything, so let's just keep it like this. But we want to have like a possible change. So changed or like new score or, yeah, how about just like changed score. And if it doesn't exist, if we don't pass anything, we'll just start it at zero. So changing it like calling it without passing a number in, we'll just say like, give me the number back. <laughs> All right, so not very helpful. Here, we're going to take, um, let's see, the score. We're going to say score uh, plus plus equals um, change score. Okay, so we should get back this function that then has access to this, and we have to uh, return the score. Yeah, so we need to return the score now. That way we actually get something back from our function, and this is what makes it a closure, because we've closed over this, which means now we have access to this internal scope outside of it. So we'll say uh, const uh, soccer game or something like that. How about like... No, that's fine. <laughs> right, we'll do create scored game, and here we won't pass it anything, because it starts at zero. It doesn't receive anything anyhow. So this initializes the game. Uh, let's do the same thing here. So I'll copy this if I can type. And let's call this like, I don't know, football game. I'll leave you football game. Um, I like soccer. 
you can call it football, whatever you want. <laughs> um, uh, so then let's take our soccer game and let's add like two to it. And then finally, why don't we console log this? So right here. Okay, I don't know what happened. Somehow I locked my Mac, so I killed the recording. But now I'm back, uh, back where we're at. Let's go ahead and console log the soccer game. Uh, and then we'll also console log it down here. Um, yeah, so let's just start with that. I'll run this. And we've got a function. That's not what I wanted. Um, let's see, soccer game, soccer game here. Oh, I have to actually call it. Because we've returned a function, this variable here holds a function. So let's try that again. We'll run it. Yeah, so it starts at zero and then goes to two. What is this zero and two? Well, it's this inner score right here. And it's separate based on each individual like game we've started. So this football game, we could do the same thing. So let's come down here and we'll change each of these to football game. Um, and let's change this to like three and I don't know. Let's duplicate this again. We'll call this five. I don't know. And then duplicate this bring this down and run it one more time. And you can see how this one stays at two. This one goes uh, to eight and they're kept, uh, kept tr uh, track of differently. All this is because we've got this internal function that's being passed back to us that we can use to then access some kind of state inside of the kind of parent function, the, the one that created the initialized the game. Well, I hope this was a help kind of going through this. I should know, I, like I went through this one time first just so I wasn't totally bumbling um, and it was enjoyable to watch. But if you found better solutions, let me know. This again, wasn't uh, to like make the most optimized. It was just to quickly solve the problem and kind of think through what a higher order function does. It either takes in a function or returns a function. If you're interested in more of these kinds of tutorials, I've done a JavaScript challenges series uh, that's in a repo. I did it several years ago, but I've come back to it every time I kind of like need to refresh. These fundamentals are so important. And if you want to follow along as we learn eloquent JavaScript, join on Mondays and Fridays as we have uh, opportunity until we're done with the book. And I hope we'll all learn a bunch together. Okay, thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Happy coding.